Let's take a trip to South America today to Peru to talk about Alianza Lima. I've been able to catch a couple of matches for them over the last couple of seasons. It's kind of hard to find them on American television right now, but I had to get their away kit from 2021 just for the cool kind of blocked nature that they do with Nike on this one. I also like that the badge on the away kit changes their home colors, which are blue and white, which gives them the nickname Los Blanqui Azules. And here it's the golden green. So it's a cool little change. On top of that, on the back, they have one of their current players who has come back to the club, Jefferson Farfan, who hasn't been there for 16 seasons. And if you're a European fan, you might have seen him on the wing for Schalke a couple seasons back. It's a very tricky winger, and it's kind of cool to see him come back to his boyhood club. As you can tell from their name, they're from Lima, Peru. They're also another employee-started club. They were started in 1901 by employees of a local horse racing farm. Beyond that, they play at the Estadio Alejandro Villanueva, a stadium they named after a famous player from their earlier years. Another common practice for clubs around the world, especially in Italy as well as Spain, with clubs like Napoli, Inter Milan, and Real Madrid doing the same. They also nicknamed their stadium Matute, which is named after the neighborhood that it's based in. Another common tactic, you can get an example of that by Liverpool, who named their stadium Anfield. The second area of interest I want to talk about is eras. They have three different decades that are kind of important for them, with the first being the 1930s, where they won four Peruvian titles in a row, which is a record and not been done by another club. Although that fourth one's a bit contentious because the league didn't declare it was their title and gave it to their fierce rivals, Universitario. Second decade of importance is the 70s, where they had a lot of international success. They won the final rendition of the Copa Simón Bolívar, which was a competition between the countries in the northern part of South America, who were all liberated by Simón Bolívar from Spanish rule. Beyond that, they also went deep in the Copa Libertadores in 76 and 78. The final decade of importance is a sad one, with the 80s being a time that was dismal for the club due to an accident and a plane crash in 1987, which killed the entire squad. They were very close to the title that season and had to finish out the year with their youth team playing most of their first team matches, as well as building a bond with the Chilean club Colo Colo because they loaned a lot of players to the club to help support them during that year. And the third area is rivalries. I spoke about Universitario a little bit back in the video, and that's their most important rivalry, with the Clásico between the two being the biggest in all of Peru. They have the advantage right now over Universitario as far as victories. They also hold a couple other rivalries against Sporting Cristal and Sport Boys. I'd love to call out one of their players from the past, Welder Science, because he also played for my hometown club, Colorado Rapids. And in their current squad, Wilmer Aguirre, who's coming up on 200 appearances for the club and is one of their longest tenured players. So this has been Alianza Lima, one of the finest clubs in all of Peru.